In this video, we're looking at how we can forecast seasonality inside Excel using the forecast.ets function. It's available in all versions of Excel from Excel 2016 onwards. I recommend you download the example file and then you'll be able to work along with this video. And you can find links in the descriptions box below. So if you're ready, let's get started. So for our scenario, we have 24 months of historical revenue numbers. And what we want to do is to create a forecast of the next 12 months of revenue numbers. Now you won't be able to see it from the data, but if I go to the completed sheet, you'll see that we have a seasonality element, but also an underlying growth factor. The solid line represents the historical values and the dotted line represents the forecast values. And the good news is that the forecast.ets function makes this kind of calculation simple. The forecast.ets function in Excel calculates seasonal results using an exponential smoothing algorithm. And the syntax of this function is as follows. So it's forecast.ets, open bracket, the target date, the values, the timeline, and then it has three optional parameters, the seasonality, the data completion, and aggregation. The target date is the date for which we want Excel to predict the value. It can be numeric or a date time value. Values are the historic values which we want to base the forecast upon. The timeline is the array or range of dates which correspond to the values and all dates must have a consistent step between them, and they also can't be zero. Now it's worth noting that the timeline does not need to be sorted in date order. Excel will do that automatically for us in memory before performing the calculation. Seasonality is an optional parameter that is used to determine the length of a season. If we enter one as this argument, it means that we want Excel to predict the pattern for us. If we enter zero, it means we want a linear calculation rather than a seasonal forecast. However, if we enter any other number, we are telling Excel that that is the length of our season. In our scenario, we have annual data. Therefore, we have 12 as our seasonality value. If we had quarterly data, then four would be our seasonality value. And we can have any number from two up to 8,764. The data completion argument is an optional value of one or zero, where one means that missing data is calculated based on the average of the neighboring data points, and zero means that any missing data should be treated as zero. Finally, the aggregation argument determines how values with the same timestamp should be treated. And this can be a number from one to seven, where one is average, two is count, three is count A, four is max, five is median, six is min, and seven is sum. For our scenario, we're not looking at either of the last two arguments. Okay, so back to our scenario, and let's put the forecast.ets function into action. So we're gonna start down here in cell C26. I'll type equals forecast dot ETS. When that bracket opens, we can see the arguments here that we can complete. And the first argument is the target date. So for that, I'll select the value in A26, which is the date that we want to forecast the value for. Next, we have the values. So the historic values that we want to use. We've got these here in column B. So I'll select those into a comma. Then I want the timeline, so the historic dates that we want to use, and we have those in column A. Now I just need to select those and press F4 to lock in those cell references. Finally, I have my seasonality. I know this is annual data, so I'll type in 12, and then we're not using our data completion or aggregation arguments in this scenario. So I'll close the bracket and press Enter. Then let's drag that formula down. Now type equals and put a value there. So therefore, when we draw a chart, we'll be able to see 
where our forecast changes to. So then all I'm going to do is select all of those values, go to insert, and then select a chart. So here we can see that we have our historic revenue number and we also have our forecast value, which has a seasonality factor applied to it. And there's also, as you can see, the underlying growth trend being applied. Forecast.ets performs some quite complex calculations. Therefore, it can be susceptible to lots of different types of errors. Excel can't calculate a suitable value if we don't give it the correct arguments. So if you get the hash value error, it probably means that one of your arguments doesn't contain numeric values where it should, or it means there's duplicate values inside the timeline. If you get the hash NA error, it means that the number of values for the values argument and also for the timeline argument are not of the same length. If you get the hash num error, it means Excel cannot find a consistent step between each of the elements in the timeline. Or it can mean that one of your arguments, such as the seasonality, the data completion, or the aggregation argument doesn't contain a valid number. Normally we know exactly how long our season is. For example, if our data is quarterly, then our season is four. If our data is monthly, then our season is 12. And we can do the same if it's weekly or daily. But there is the option to let Excel predict this for us. So let's see what happens, shall we? I'm going to come in here and edit my formula in cell C26. I'm going to remove the seasonality argument and see how good Excel is at predicting this for us. I'll just copy that down. Oh dear, as you can see, that's not really what we want. It looks like Excel seasonality finding algorithm may not be that useful. So actually in this scenario, it's definitely better for us to use our own seasonality argument. Before Excel 2016, calculating forecasts that contain seasonality were really tricky. It involved a lot of extra steps. But now with forecast.ets, we can do it easily. We just have to put the right arguments into our function. So I hope you find this video useful. If you did, don't forget to subscribe and I'll catch you next time.